Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new here then a big welcome. If you do like this video please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe, uh, otherwise let's get straight into this one. So this one is a commission piece that I was able to do which I was really pleased with the opportunity. It was my sister's partner actually, he had come in and seen my pieces on the four horsemen that I'd done which if you've seen the first YouTube video you'll know that that was done on the final one that I did which is war which is the one with the axe although apologies on the voiceover on that one I was still getting used to it and I am still getting used to having to talk for this long but so that was really good so he really liked the pieces because they were up in my house and he wanted to have his own one but he wanted them to have all four horse skulls together he was happy with the way i'd done them but he wanted all four together with a sundial in the middle and then he wanted each skull to be at a different point so for death to be facing north and then war to be east famine to be south and plague to be west so that was really good i mean i found it a bit difficult at first because the ones that i've done are all on quite like larger panels and because i'd done them one skull to each panel or one skull to each a4 page it was a lot easier to do all the details and get all the shading done in that and then because he wanted all four together i didn't want to have to go for this ginormous canvas because i thought that's a bit overkill but i did want to be able to do a decent size and I wanted it to be a square so that it was even on all sides because when I was looking at different canvas shapes, the rectangle ones, it just wouldn't have fitted. It would have been too squashed in on the thinner sides. In the end, I went for a 40 by 40 centimetre canvas and then did it as a diamond shape, as you can see in the video. This enabled me to use the points as being able to keep the horse skull in without having to squish it too much to try and fit everything in. And then because this was actual canvas rather than canvas board, I found it slightly different to work on because there wasn't as much structure in the middle of the canvas as there is on canvas board because obviously you've got a hard surface all the way across, whereas on canvas you don't. So that was quite unusual to get used to because I haven't worked on canvas since my college days when I was doing my A-level art then. Um, but prepping it was pretty much the same as what I do with all my canvas boards. I did a couple of layers of white gesso and then a layer of the black acrylic paint before going in. Now, I didn't show all the imp like time of me prepping the canvas and that because this video was already rather long and it took me ages to try and edit it to this point where it's like just over 13 minutes long because otherwise it was just going to be ridiculously long because I did spend a long, long time working on this. Which brings me kind of like to the topic of discussion, which is about commissions. So commissions are really useful, obviously, because it's a way of having a piece of artwork already sold, which is amazing because whenever you create artwork, there is no guarantee it's going to sell. Not at all. And even when you make prints and things like that, again, that likelihood of making sales and that for some people is really, really high depending on what you're creating so some of it might be more popular than others or a bit more talented than others but that's just with practice and over time but there's no guarantee for a sale whereas a commission slightly different there is that guaranteed income which is amazing however there is a few things i've learned that i definitely think I personally need to improve upon and I thought as I was thinking over these it might be useful for anyone that's starting out that wants to learn these things and learn about the plus side and the negatives to commissions that maybe this will be helpful. So the main things for me I think it's easier to go over the negatives first and then the positives because as I said I mean the main positive is the fact that you've already got pieces already sold. The negative on it is trying to determine how long it's going to take because to be able to give a good quote for a price on your artwork you need to know firstly the size that they want because if it's a particularly large piece that's going to take you longer to do therefore it should be more expensive and then you've also got to think about what are they wanting it on so are is it going to be on paper that they want framed 
is it canvas board that they want framed or is it just a canvas then it doesn't have to be framed all of that influences pricing because when you're choosing a frame if you're going to get especially made things like that that pricing is on there which you should charge to your customer and your customer should be aware of that because that's what they're requesting same as the canvas i chose so obviously my sister's partner wanted a canvas piece which is great and he gave me luckily in this regard quite free reign to the size and things like that he just told me what he wanted on it so then i went with the size that i could fit it all on in retrospect i wish i'd had a piece that was maybe 50 by 50 centimeters because i feel it would have helped just even out the spacing on it a little bit better but I did manage to fit everything in so and he's pleased with the results which is the main thing but because it's a commission piece that price of the canvas was included in my cost to him because at the end of the day at the very least just because I know him doesn't mean that I shouldn't at least have money to cover the cost of the canvas right that's really important so don't ever sell yourself short on that always include the cost of your canvas one thing I will say is if you're using something like I use acrylic paints, I wouldn't charge for the paints. I really wouldn't. Acrylic paint, especially, I can't say for oil paints, things like that because I haven't worked with them, but acrylic paints last forever. And I use quite cheap and cheerful products because obviously this is not my main source of income. So it's whatever money I have spare goes on to paint. But a tube of paint, can last me months so I'm not going to charge him or charge anyone for paint when it's going to last me a long time so for me personally trying to work out a price I always find a bit difficult because I'm still getting used to that fact of I can charge for my artwork and it's all very new and I still get a bit like oh my god should I really charge this much but I definitely think include what you're working on so if they want it framed include the frame price if it's on a canvas include the canvas price don't charge for extra materials unless it's a particularly expensive oil paint or things like that like i said i don't know those pricing i'm only basing off of what i use but then also think about the amount of time it's going to take so this piece if it wasn't for the fact that i had already painted out the four horsemen like the skulls individually and that's what he liked and he wanted them the same if it wasn't for that this piece would have taken me a minimum of about 15 hours plus to do because of the fact that you have to do your initial sketches you well i personally again i'm basing this on my experience i do initial sketches I then do watercolour versions of those sketches to know the colours I want to use. I then go into, I would then do test runs of acrylic paint to again make sure it's all okay. Then I would draw it out on the canvas. Then you've got to prep your canvas, paint your canvas, do all of that. So that's a lot of time. So you need to think about that when you're giving a price. Now I'm not going to say how much this price went for because that's private between me and the person that bought it but I would honestly I did not would never at this moment in time until I'm a lot more established give myself a very high hourly rate simply because yes this is my career but I'm not expecting the wage that I'm getting at my full-time job at all because I am starting out but I've done enough to cover my expense on the canvas and then enough as an extra to cover cost of new new art materials that I've been wanting to try and I would needed new print printer ink for my printer and that covered that cost and so I would always do it by materials you've used plus the hours that have gone into it a couple of rules I've definitely picked up on is one always take a deposit especially if this isn't your main income because and even if it is to be fair because that deposit should cover the canvas or the frame or whatever it is that they're wanting it done on. That should be that base materials cost. And then the final, the re remainder of the amount, that should cover the time taken into it. Because otherwise, what I found is that I'm having to dip into my own personal money to pay out for this canvas before I even ha received any money to do it. And so I've got to shoulder that expense first which although it may not seem like a lot, when you've got rent and bills and that to pay, it, it is 
it is something that you don't want to have to pay out for. So definitely take a deposit first. It doesn't have to be a lot, even just 30 quid. That will cover you for, or should cover you, depending on the size that they want for a canvas and the initial like sketching out ideas time. Then a second thing is always stay in contact with the person that's commissioned you. So throughout every step of it, thankfully, as I said, for this one, it was easier because I'd already had the four horse skulls painted up and he was happy with those. But he wanted the sundial. So I sketched out a couple of different designs, sent them to him, said, let me know which one you prefer. And then if there's any changes to make, which we then did that. And when he was happy, that was great. And then the same when I sketched it out onto the canvas, I sent him the image going, this is the base layout of it. How are you finding it? And then again, you know, so throughout all of it, keep that communication going because you don't want to be steamroller in ahead, get into where it's almost finished and then realizing, crap, they need me to change a lot of stuff. So I think those are, that's the main points I've definitely learned from doing commission pieces. And it's been really interesting, been a bit of a challenge, but the main positives to take from it is see it as it's a great thing that you've already sold a piece before you've even finished it which is amazing but do be clear on your pricing do take a deposit and do keep in contact with the person that's doing the commission and realize that sometimes people are going to be a bit more fussy than others and just be honest with your abilities so if they ask for something that you physically cannot do or cannot achieve to the standard that they want be honest about that it's better to be honest than to do it wrong that's going to give you more negativity than if you just straight up go to someone you know what i don't think i can do that this is what i can do and sketch out what you can do and be like if that's what you if that's okay with you then that is what i can do but if it's not don't stress yourself out over it yes commissions are amazing but you're still or well, I, I am still growing, I am still getting used to this as a career um, or trying to for it to become a career. And that's one thing I've definitely learned is be honest and it's okay to say no. Although it might, you know, feel like you shouldn't because you want to make as much effort as possible and you want to reach as many people as possible. Don't stress yourself out like that. It's really not worth it. At the end of the day, if people like your artwork, they will like it. And if it's not the style that they're after, you can't just change all of that for one person. That, that's not worth it. That's not staying true to who you are. And the money out of it will not be worth the amount of time and stress that's gone into it. Anyway, I hope this little ramble on commissions um, was helpful. I will have a bit more detailed explanation in the description notes below as well as as always the materials I've used and everything else and if you've got any questions or anything like that please let me know in the comments below as always anything that you'd like to see in future videos let me know